Erica, Cynthia Vincent, Janice, Yvette Thomas, and Joshua Collier, Nelton Green, Pastor Johnson, Sister Denise Johnson, Miss Ella, Emily, my husband's co-worker, Frank Coakley, Otis Wilder, the Body of Christ, Backsliders, Orphans and Widows, those that are sick and those that are afflicted, those that are grieving, remembering our children, our young adults, remembering the young lady that was on Facebook that she's missing. They said they put a little child out on the freeway and she went to see about the child. She got abducted. So please be aware of the scam. I don't know if it was a scam or whatever happened, but please pay, pay close attention and follow the lead of the Lord, even with helping other people. We pray, even so, come Lord Jesus. We pray that we all are ready when the Lord comes back. And we also are praying for our travelers. We have several of the saints traveling to the National Convention this week. And they'll be returning home. We ask God for safe travels for them. We ask God to remember my pastor and myself in your prayers in the name of the Lord. Everyone please stand as we go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you. from glory many things you were under a holy king a carpenter
Jesus, Jesus. Don't mind calling him Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's look to the Lord. Lord, as we look to you tonight, we thank you for the very blessings that come from on high. Thank you tonight for our help and our strength. Thank you, God, for allowing us to come together yet one more time in your name. For you told us, God, in your word, one, two, and three, are gathered together in your name. You would be in the midst of us. We invite you here tonight, God. We invite your presence. We ask you, God, Jesus, to open up our understanding. We may be able to speak with pinpoint accuracy to help somebody along the way, God. Someone struggling and don't know which way to go, God. Send God a special blessing and anointing tonight over the here and the those, God. Oh, God, that can I hear your word tonight? from the mouth of God and we thank God for revealing his word to us tonight and I'm happy about it that I can be able to break bread with you all one more time whether you are in the sanctuary or online we just want to say that to God be the glory tonight because it didn't have to be this way but I'm so glad that it is and I just want to say that I thank everyone for coming out on family day. It was a splendid time in the Lord. And uh, uh, the only thing I said, if I could have had somebody to go down in Jesus' name and fill with the Holy Ghost, that would have been the, that would have been the nice and on top of the cake. But the Lord knows he'll fill people at his own time. But until, until then, we'll keep on pressing on one day, one sermon, one word at a time until the Lord comes. Because we realize the Lord is soon to come. And he's coming for people that is ready for his return. Those who are looking for him, he will return. And he will return for those without spot, spot, wrinkle, or blemish. He's not coming for a raggedy church tonight. But he's coming for those who have separated themselves and have kept themselves and loves his appearance. And I'm glad tonight that I'm trying the best that I can to purify myself because every man that I have this hope purifies himself. And I got hope tonight. What about you? Hallelujah. If you don't mind tonight, I'm going to piggyback off of the sermon that I preached on Sunday because I just stopped. I wasn't finished. And when I started singing that song, we just went home and I had something else that I wanted you to have. And I think it will be beneficial to you and I tonight. But if I repeat some of the things that I've done on Sunday, I just say amen. And so then with that in mind, my message for Sunday and for tonight is the same. If you want to say part two or uh, to be continued, you can do that as well. <laughs> uh, but we thank God for his word. His word have enlightened and strengthened and have given us courage to go forth to this present day. For the adversary have blinded a lot of uh, the minds of people who have come over this way. And for some reason, they're not serving God anymore. For some reason, they have gotten knocked all the way out of the box. And they don't even have a desire to serve God. I'm glad tonight that I still have a desire to come to the house of the Lord. Still have a mind, a made up mind that, to resist sin. Because sin is always present always trying to show us ugly hatred, but I realized that sin is the separator. So you have to say no to sin and to walk according to God's purpose. And as I brought out on Sunday, to serve God fully is what he wants. He said, I would rather for you to be cold or, 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 or be hot. And then I know what I'm dealing with. But he said, because so many people are lukewarm in the day that we're working in, walking in, 
Then he said that I would just uh, spew you out of my mouth. The carnal mind is against God. Carnal mind cannot please God. They that are carnal minded shall come to death, shall not profit you anything. But let me go to my scripture in uh, Numbers tonight. I guess I can see good enough. I left my glasses in the office. I guess I can see good enough. <laughs> In Numbers chapter number 14, and um, we will begin in verse number 1. And the Bible reads, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Aaron, against Moses, and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or with God we had died in the wilderness. And wherefore had the Lord brought us unto this, unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return unto Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. And it goes on to say in verse number 22, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these ten times. And have not hearkened unto my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I sworn unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him. And had followed me fully. Hallelujah. Him will I bring unto the land whereunto he went. And his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you unto the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. When you follow God fully, there's always a way out. I want you to know that the children of Israel, after they had come out of Egypt, I'm pretty sure when you first, just like when you first got saved, you were so excited. Uh, nothing, nothing offended you. You were so, you were slap, slap. What Pastor used to say, slap, slap me happy. You were so glad. You was just uh, slap glad happy. You was just so glad to be delivered from sin. You was running. You were so busy running, shouting, and jumping that you didn't pay no attention to your surroundings. And I'm pretty sure it was just like the children of Israel after they had been in bondage so long and came out of bondage. And then when they looked around and realized that where they were, it wasn't the land that God had promised them. Well, it takes a process to get where the Lord wants you to go. You don't automatically come over here and automatically think that you're going to have an easy bed of roses, that you're never going to have any trouble that you're never going to go through anything. I want you to know that we all have our wilderness experience. But the key point tonight I want to bring out and to let you know that just like the children of Israel, the Bible says you've seen the miracles that I did in Egypt and the miracles that I've done in the wilderness, but yet you still murmured and complained against your God, even though God was supplying every one of their needs. The Bible said that he fed them from manna from where? From on high. God just rained down manna for them to be able to partake of a natural substance for they can be fed naturally. And he said that he supplied light. It was a pillar by day. And he, is he by night, he, and a pillar by night, he, he, he supplied every one of their needs. They, they, they didn't have need of anything. But yet, because they wanted more than what they had. And that's a dangerous position, people of God, ladies and gentlemen. I want to tell you tonight.
to try to force God to do something that you want. You all, we all should be praying for the will of God to be done. I'm reminded of Paul, he said, to be content in whatever state that you're in. He said, I know what it is to have a lot. I know what it is to have a little. He said, I know what it is to be hungry, and I know what it is to be full. But with every situation that I come in, I've learned to be content. And then the Bible goes on to tell us that godliness with contentment is great gain. I want you to know when God is supplying every one of your needs and he's allowing you to wake up in the morning and still have a praise on your lips in spite of your situation, in spite of the doctor's report, what the doctors told you and how you feel in your body, you should have a praise on your lips for the Lord and not a complaint. You should not be crying about what you don't have, but you ought to be thankful for what you do have. For the Bible instructed you and I in everything, give thanks. Hallelujah. So that means you may have some bad times sometimes. That means that you may be happy sometimes. I believe it was Solomon the wise man that said in Ecclesiastes, there's a time and a season for everything and a purpose for everything under the sun. And he went on to name, it's a time to laugh, it's a time to cry. A time to live and it's a time to die. It's a time to, to gather and a time to give away. The Lord already knows what we need. Uh, what I, I'm glad about tonight, but the Lord knows what you need before you even ask Him. Uh, so you should always ask God with the intentions of God. Uh, he told us how to pray. We say that it's the, it's the, the Lord's Prayer. But he was teaching the disciples how to pray. And he said, not my will, but your will be done. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We should learn more to pray for the will of the Lord to be done rather than trying to always find out what we can get from the Lord. I want you to know, just like the children of Israel, they murmured and cried so much that the Lord said that there were many of them that fell in the wilderness because they did not, hallelujah, serve God fully. They didn't have the same spirit that Caleb had. And so therefore, the Bible says that they were destroyed and they never got a chance to see the land that was promised for them. I don't want to make the same mistake here, ladies and gentlemen, saints of God. But after I've been tried in the fire, I want to continue to press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I realize that there's a better land in which we're living in tonight. We're living in a place where everything that we have is temporary. There's nothing that we have is permanent. If you have a church home, that's not a permanent place. That's just a place you should enjoy for the season. If you have a home that you're living in, and we say that it's our home, miss a bill and see what they come and get it. And you won't have nowhere to pay, or nowhere to stay. We were looking at a program the other day, and the man, uh, it was foreclosing on his house, and he was giving all these excuses why they shouldn't foreclose on his house. They didn't care about one iota. It was time when it was time for him to go. They put locks on his house and they put him out on the streets. Hallelujah! I'm so glad that we serve a God that don't do us like that. Hallelujah! Sometimes we don't pay our bill for His praise. Hallelujah! We make vows to the Lord, but we fail to pay our vow. Because we are too busy uh, looking for something else. Instead of being thankful for what the Lord has already done for us, we have a spirit of complaining like the children of Israel. And because of that spirit of complaining, you're going to find yourself never getting to the next level. Because God wants you to know to be thankful for what you got. Hallelujah. You ought to give glory to God for not leaving you out there in a world of sin. On your way, you were on your way to hell. You were on your, you didn't have God in your life. You were doing all kind of ungodly things, but God, who is rich in mercy, 
with his great love, he looked at you, little old you. You can put yourself, put your name, hallelujah, where that blessing came in. At. I'm so glad that the Lord seen me, that when I was in my sin, from a great cloud of people, he came along and he chose me and he cleaned me up. And now I say, I got purpose for living tonight. I got a reason, hallelujah, whatever the Lord, the matter of fact, he told the children of Israel, he said, wherever the soles of your feet, wherever it touch, I'm going to give it to you. All you got to do is follow me fully. Quit trying to go back from where you came from. So many people are trying to go back from where you came from. God already delivered you from that. Even though it may have been a great place where you were. Uh, and, and, and the old song said, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Uh, but don't forget the second part of that song. Jesus, I'll never forget because you set me free. God delivered you from some yeah. things. There were some things that he didn't want you. How many know it here that he will never withhold any good thing from you? How many glad about that? Hallelujah. He will never withhold any good thing from you. So sometimes we complain about wanting to go back and to be in the old place that we were in. But God said it's time to move on because I want you to possess a better land. He said, I got something better for you. So all you got to do is follow me. We must have the spirit, hallelujah, of humbleness. We must humble ourselves. For the Bible says if you humble yourself in due season, then he will exhort you in due time. Hallelujah. God will never leave, hallelujah, himself without a witness. I'm here to let you know that whatever state that you're in or wherever you at, you may say, oh, well, they don't do it like we used to do it at the old church. Huh? We used to do it this way and we used to do it that way. Well, that was a good time to do it. But now is the time to do it the way that God is instructing you to do it today. Just like he told, hallelujah, when he told Moses, hallelujah, he told him, to, when, when he told him to come down the first time, he told him to smoke the rock. Hallelujah. And he said the water came out of the rock. And because of Moses, uh, M Moses was angry. He told him the second time, he said, don't smoke it anymore because you're angry. He said, this time speak to the rock. Hallelujah. And then when Moses came down, he got mad and he called him some re rebels. He said, you rebels. And he he smoked the rock. And God said, because of that, you cannot go into the land that I already promised you. You don't want to never get yourself where you're so angry and so bent out of shape that you do something that God did not tell you. How many know that obedience is better than sacrifice? Hallelujah. When you obey God, hallelujah, the Bible said Caleb had another spirit. He had a spirit that was with him. Emmanuel, a spirit with him. He had a spirit, hallelujah, that he wasn't complaining like the children of Israel. Hallelujah. He had a spirit even though the Canaanites and the Amalites was in the land and there were giants in the land he had another spirit. He said we can conquer that land. Even though the spies, they brought back reports that we cannot ca conquer that land. He said no, with the Lord on our side we can conquer the land. That's how you and I have to be with serving God. There are some troubles that are going to come in your life that you feel like that you just going to never get over. But I want you to know with the Lord on your side, you can conquer those troubles. The Bible says, matter of fact, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. How are we more than conquerors? Who, through the Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us strength. Hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Hallelujah. We don't have time to complain about what we don't have. We ought to be giving God praise for what we do have. Ah, God has been so good to you and I. If I just uh, give each one of you a chance to testify there were times when you could have lost your life. There were times when you could have been put out on the streets. There were times you could have smoked something that you could have just went all the way out of your mind and didn't have your right mind. But God, hallelujah, what a kind God to bring us in this arena. Hallelujah. And how dare some of us, hallelujah, allow the devil. Let me tell you something. The devil is on his job 24-7. He never stops. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible said Jesus never sleep or summer. It seemed like the devil seemed like he don't rest neither. Hallelujah. But one good thing about it, the Bible instructed us is we resist the devil. He'll go away for that season. Hallelujah. We can get the devil
devil off of us, but we have to resist him. And when we resist him, I'm saying build up on your joy. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost and give glory to God. Hallelujah. Because the adversary will come back again. And just like in the beginning, the devil is so subtile. He is so sneaky with what he do. He don't care if the saints of God have half of the truth and doing half of the word, as long as you don't do the full word. Just like he told Eve, we should not surely die. We should not, we'll be like God's. He's only telling half of the truth. Just like he do us today. He'll give you half of the truth. Let me tell you, I want to talk to somebody today. All of you that are out there, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yourself together. That's God's word. It's not just because we want to see you in church. We want your soul, we want you to inherit. We want you to possess the promise that the Lord promised to you. And if you're out there, hallelujah, and you don't have a church home, and you don't have nowhere to go, you will never possess this land that the Lord promised to you and I. He said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. And then where I am, I want you to be there also. But you can't get there uh, if you don't do it the way that God said do it. You can't get there if you don't serve the Lord fully. He told you to serve him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. There's not enough people putting their priorities in the right place. Hallelujah. You should put God, how should you put God? First in everything that you do. You should, it shouldn't be no human being that you put before God. Yeah, you love your wife, your children, you love your family, but you should put God first. Hallelujah. God is first in my life. I'm going to let God know, hallelujah, that I'm going to give him all, hallelujah, the glory and all of the praise. And whenever he get ready to change my situation, like Job said, I'm just going to wait till my change come. Hallelujah. I can't do nothing. I can't make God do anything. Hallelujah. But when I'm going through a trial, I'm just going to say hallelujah anyhow. Because the Lord, if he takes you to a trial, he's going to bring you out of that trial. We got to possess it. And I'm looking to possess tonight. Let me read on here. First John. Hallelujah. And five says, for this is the love uh, of God. That we keep his commandment. And his commandments are not grievous. God's commandments are not hard, y'all. Whenever God instructs you to do something, he gives you the power or the ability to do it. He said, for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. What is our victory tonight? Even our faith. Hallelujah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. With your faith, you can move mountains tonight. With your faith, hallelujah, all you got to do is keep on believing and watch God bring it to fruition. Hallelujah. Verse number five says, Who is he that overcometh the world? But, hallelujah, he that believed that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that cometh by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, uh, not by water only, but by water and blood. Hallelujah. It said, and it is the Spirit that bear witness because the Spirit is truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free tonight. How many glad to be liberated in here? How many glad to know the truth? Hallelujah. God's word is truth. The Bible says, let every man be a lie, and the Lord be truth. Is that right, somebody? Hallelujah. And I'm glad about it, because God can't lie. One thing God can't do is lie. God, if he lied, he wouldn't be God any longer. I'm so glad that when he promised you something, all you got to do is hold on to it. All you got to do is possess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't look back and don't get weary. One writer said, don't be weary in well-doing. Hallelujah. So you shall reap if you faint not. The only way, if, if you're going to get your uh, full reward, if you overcome. Hallelujah. And this is our victory. Hallelujah. Even our faith that overcome the world. And it goes on to say, hallelujah here. Uh, and it said, and it is the spirit that bear witness because the spirit is true. And the and and the Son, and this is the record, that God has given unto us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. And listen to this part here. I want you to cone in on it. He that has the Son has life. Hallelujah. And he that has not the Son of God 
has not life. Hallelujah. That is plain and clear tonight. Hallelujah. If you don't have this Holy Ghost dwelling inside of you, then you don't have life. What are you talking about? Yeah, you're still in existence and you still have activities of your limb, but you're not prepared for that place that he had promised you and I. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going away to prepare it for you. Hallelujah. That where I am, I want you to be there also. And if you don't have the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the God, from the grave, then you can't get up when I come back. So I want you to know it's time to possess it. Hallelujah. It's time to go for everything that the Lord has for you and stop letting the devil rob you of the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Too many people have looked back. Hallelujah. And not given heed to the word of God. Hallelujah. God have already counseled us and try to uh, uh, give us everything that we need. Hallelujah. But yet we still complain. And we want more. Always hungry for more. No. Don't be hungry for the things of the world. The Bible says thirst after righteousness. Hallelujah. Be hungry after righteousness. Go after the thing. Hallelujah. It's going to bring eternity. Go after the thing that's going to please your father. Go after the thing. Hallelujah. You got to deny yourself. If any man follow me, let him deny himself. Hallelujah. It's a denying way. Your flesh want to cut up. Your flesh want to act up. Your flesh want everything. But I want you to know some things are not good for you because it's not going to give you the possession that God promised you. But I want everything. What about you tonight? Hallelujah. So he goes on to say here in Romans 14, hallelujah, 16. He said, let not your good be evil spoken. And then he comes right here and said, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness is peace joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah for that. Hallelujah. He said, for he that in, in these things uh, uh, serveth Christ is a, approvable to God and approved of man. He said, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and, 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 and things wherewith one may edify another. This is what we should do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's yours tonight. I want you to know that the peace is yours tonight. He said, follow righteousness. It's yours tonight. I want you to know that joy is yours tonight. Hallelujah. God's going to supply every one of your needs. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the uh, uh, nor a seed bagging for bread. So you ain't got to worry about the meat and the drink. But all you got to worry about saying, God, I want to possess the joy. Hallelujah. If you told me as a son or a daughter of God that I should have joy, then I want the joy that belongs to me. Hallelujah. If you told me that I should have peace, hallelujah, I want the peace that belongs to me. But you can only have it if you have it in the Holy Ghost. God wants you to know tonight. You can possess that tonight. Hallelujah. You ain't got to stand before no preacher. Hallelujah. And confess, hallelujah, that I love the Lord with all of my heart and with all my soul. Now you say, go live the life. Humbug. You cannot live. If you have not the Son of God, you have not life. Hallelujah. And the only way to get the Son of God, you got to let the gift, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost come straight from heaven. Just like he, hallelujah, gave the children of Israel matter from on high. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going away, but I'm going to leave something with you. I'm going to leave that which is called the comforter. Hallelujah. And the comforter that I lead you, hallelujah, it's going to empower you. It's going to enable you. It's going to lead you and it's going to guide you into not some truth, but it's going to lead you into all truth. Hallelujah. It's going to give you a way. It says, Jesus, I won't look back when I look back from where I came from and what, what I've been through. I have to throw up my hand and know it wasn't nothing but the grace of God. For I was walking through the shadow of the battle of death, but I don't fear that evil. For the Lord, he is with us. You and I, and I'm so glad tonight. Hallelujah. He said, let not your good be evil spoken of. Hallelujah. The adversary want to get you all tangled up and twisted up in confusion. Hallelujah. With your brother and with your sister. Hallelujah. Humbug. Later on for that, you ain't got time to be hating one another. The Bible said you should not hate one another. He said, how do you know that, and that you are my disciple if you have love for one another? We ought to be loving one another and praying each other out of fire. 
Ah, hallelujah. But the devil been roaring lying, seeking about who he may devour. He wants to sift you as we. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad tonight that the Lord prayed for help. He said, Peter, the devil desire to sift you as we. Uh, but he said, Don't worry, Peter. I've already prayed for you. Hallelujah. And he said, I pray. Why? Why did you pray, Lord? That your faith fail you not. I'm so glad that I have the faith. Hallelujah. Just reaching up and letting. Uh, hallelujah. My eternity is crying inside of me, y'all. Hallelujah. There's something crying inside of me. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. There's something looking for better. Hallelujah. As I grow older, hallelujah, and weaker, hallelujah, and, and things start to happen in my life, hallelujah. I believe one writer said, so hallelujah, the outer man is perishing, the inner man is being renewed. How often, y'all? Uh, day by day. Ha, and I'm so glad uh, he's renewing me tonight that I can give, uh, give God all of the praise and give God all of the glory for the things that he's done for my, hallelujah, for little old me. Uh, he called me out of darkness uh, into this marvelous light, and I'm grateful for it tonight. Hallelujah. He told me to possess that joy. I should have joy. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength, y'all. Hallelujah. That's why you gotta have joy. He said you gotta have peace. Huh? Because in the world you're gonna have a bunch of trouble. There's gonna be trouble on every hand. But because, hallelujah, I gave you, hallelujah, this possession, peace shall be yours. And the peace that you and I have, guess what it does? It passes all understanding. People don't even understand how you're so peaceful when hell is breaking out. How am I so peaceful? Why? Because I got the love of Jesus and it's deep down in my soul. I got the love of Jesus and it's pushing me. It's propelling me to go higher in the Lord. It's taking me to a place that I've never been before. And I can say glory to the name of the Lord. What about you tonight? Oh, glory. Hallelujah. So it goes on to say, hallelujah, possess it. Hallelujah, it's yours. You ought to claim it tonight. It goes on to say, but the, in Galatians 5 and 22, very familiar passage of the scripture. Hallelujah. But the fruit, not S. It's no S on this. The fruit is all in one. Hallelujah. You know, when you go and you stay at a hotel, it'll say all inclusive. Every, everything is included. Your dinner, everything, all of the, the, the sporting events, uh, your breakfast, everything is all tied up in there. When you get the real Holy Ghost, all of this is already in there, y'all. Hello, hello, somebody. Hallelujah. And you can't separate them. It's no, that's, that's the problem. People want to separate them. Why? Because he said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Nobody really have a problem with that. But we do have a problem, but we don't have a problem. Because we don't love one another the way we should love one another. But we want to be loved. So we don't have a problem with somebody loving us. The problem comes in when we're supposed to love somebody else. Can't separate it. Look at somebody telling you, can't separate it. He said, the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace. Who don't want peace? Huh? Who don't want peace? Who want to be living in a bunch of chaos? A crazy person. And we we got people like that. We got people that ain't satisfied till they done worked up a bunch of stink. And got us fighting against one another. And then they sitting around smiling. That's the spirit of the devil. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Hallelujah. That is not your brother or your sister. You always want to stir up some steam. They better check themselves because they're not going to get the promise that the Lord promised them. And I want my promise tonight. What about you? He said that it is peace. And then this is where the trouble come in at. Long suffering. Uh-oh. Don't nobody really want to do that. <laughs> we, like, we like the love. We like the joy and the peace, the long suffering. Ooh, we don't really want to do that. The Bible says that if you live godly, listen to me closely, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking online tonight, hello. The, hello. You shall suffer persecution. Huh? Many are the affliction of the thank you. The righteous. You're doing the right thing. You're doing everything that you can to do the right thing, but affliction will still come your way. Right. Why? Because there's a time and a season for every purpose under the sun. You can't always be living happy. Yeah, everything is yeah, everything is good. But what's this? It's all good. It's okay. It's all good. It's okay. J Mouth. It's okay. It's all good. 
It's all good. It's okay. Oh, Jay, I'm sorry. It ain't all good. It's not, it's not all the time. Sometimes I have to literally cry. Sometimes I have to get down on my knees and I have to pray till I get a breakthrough. Not just getting down there talking about my our father, which you other have in I would be that name. Lay me down to sleep. Pray my soul you keep to arise in the morning. No. You gotta have to scream out to the Lord. You're gonna have to let sometimes the Holy Ghost make intercession for you. Because you don't even is it sometimes it ain't nothing but a groan. Down on my knees and just saying, huh, mm, ha, uh, Lord, ah, Lord, yes. Every time I try to open up my mouth and say, ah, ah, and I say yes, and then I say, yes, Lord, you've been good. It's in your hand. Go ahead, I get up off my knees and I feel all refreshed. Uh, because I begin, hallelujah, to make melody to the Lord. I, I, I've spoken that heavenly language that edifies me. Hallelujah. You ought to try it sometime. Hallelujah. When you speak in tongue, it's to edify yourself. Hallelujah. The Lord never instructed me to be up here speaking in tongue to you all. The Bible said, uh, Paul said, if you do it, should be an interpreter in the room. Uh, if I'm just sitting up here speaking in tongue, y'all don't know what I'm saying. But the foolishness of some people, some people do that in the church go crazy. Church go preserved. Uh, everybody jumping and shouting, and you don't even know what he's saying. Hello, somebody. I know somebody ain't gonna like me. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Uh, Help me, Lord. Let me go on and say. Uh, and, and the Bible says here in, in 24, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affliction of the lust. It goes on to say in 25, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Hello, somebody. I want you to know today that God I gave you this possession. We should have joy, peace. Oh, I didn't, I didn't get all of it. It says it's gentleness. Hello, somebody. It's goodness. It's faith. It's meekness. It's temperance. Against such there is no law. God never came to destroy the law. He is the fulfillment of the law. Yes. Your God is the fulfillment of the law. Yes. Hallelujah. And then that's when he goes on to say, hallelujah, if you if you walk in the spirit, if you live in the spirit, then walk in the spirit. I want you to know tonight that God has something for you and I that he will not be told, but you got to, hallelujah, you, you, it's yours, but you got to possess it and don't look back. Ah, quit complaining about the things that you don't have and give glory to the things that you do have. Because uh, God is way in motive. We have, we, we, uh, God said that you're going to be judged one day for every thought. Every single thought, you're going to be judged for it. And it, it, he's going to judge you whether it be good or whether it be evil. How many done some things that you know what not too pleasing with the Lord? In here, if I can get some honesty in here, but somebody said, But God, but tell God, God is a God that will never stop forgiving. How long do His mercy last, y'all? His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that. Ah, glory. When man just go you away and say you ain't no good, God said, That's still my son and still my daughter. He said, I'm married, a matter of fact, to a backslider. Hallelujah. They keep on turning their back on me time after time after time, but I still keep forgiving them and bringing them back home. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that one day that I came to the Lord just as I was. Hallelujah. And he forgave me of my sin. Ah, glory. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that since that day, I can say now that I have possessed, hallelujah, the fruit of the Spirit, I can go on with the Lord, hallelujah, because the Lord wants to take me to another place, hallelujah. He got a higher place that he's going to take me to, and I'm going to possess it tonight. I'm not going to let nobody, myself, my mother, my father, uh, anybody take my crown. God gave the crown to me, and I'm going to wear it one day. What about you? Let me finish up here. Philippians 3 and 9, it says here, uh, glory, hallelujah. You gotta follow the Lord fully, y'all. Hallelujah. You gotta have a different spirit in here. You gotta get tough in the Holy Ghost. Ah, uh, you can't run at the first sign of trouble when the devil comes to run a uh, rough shot in your life and you throw up your hand and say okay to the devil. You gotta, hallelujah, 
have a different spirit to say, I'm going to resist that devil. And if I resist the devil, the word of God tell me the devil got to go. Hallelujah. I'm so glad tonight that I got another spirit in here. How many got a good spirit in here? You got the spirit of the living God. How many can confess, hallelujah, that you have, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost living inside of you and glad about it. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost that I have, hallelujah, the world didn't give it to me. I didn't stand before no man and, and receive it that way. But one day I cried out to the Lord. I got down on my knees and I cried to the Lord. And the Lord came in and he gave me the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the anointing. He gave me that. Hallelujah. It changed my whole life. It made me walk right. Hallelujah. It made me talk right. It gave me joy. Hallelujah. It made me run, shout, and jump. He gave me the Holy Ghost and I'm glad about it tonight. He didn't give me no substitute. Hallelujah. He didn't let me, hallelujah, have half of it. Hallelujah. But he took, he opened the windows of heaven and he poured out a blessing. Hallelujah. And he didn't just drip it on me. He poured it all on me. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost fall on me. I'm so glad that the anointing of the Holy Ghost fell on me. Now I possess it. I got it all inside of me. I'm claiming it. Hallelujah. I'm giving God glory for every situation. Oh, glory. Got to have a different spirit. So it goes on to say in Philippians 3 and 9, and be found in him, not having your own righteousness, which is of the law. Hallelujah. But that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Hallelujah. And he goes on to say here, that I may know him. Oh, glory in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. Oh, why do I want to know you that way? Because I'm being made conformable unto his death. Hallelujah. Then it goes on to say here, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect. Ain't none of us perfect. Ain't none of us obtained nothing. Or uh, whatever you've done, serving God, hallelujah, you don't get a reward for what you already done. You The only way you're going to get a reward if you hold out to the end. Hallelujah. You don't get no merit band saying, oh yeah, you've done good for a little while. Hallelujah. I believe James said you do did run well, but what hinder you that you do not run? Hallelujah. I, I want you to know you got to keep on running and walking with the Lord one day at a time. Let me finish up here. It says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after uh, if that I may apprehend uh, that uh, for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And it goes on to say in 13, brother, I count not myself to already apprehend. Hallelujah. But this one thing I do. What do I do? I, I've been to some places. I had it good back there. Hallelujah. And we were back there, hallelujah, in Egypt, and they were supplying. We had somewhere to lay our head. We went under the open tent. Hallelujah. We were and we had a place of shelter. And we had a place that we were doing good. But guess what? You were in bondage. Hallelujah. So I brought you out. Hallelujah. One thing I do, forget those things were behind me. Hallelujah. Yeah, we had a great pastor and we had a great church, but it's over with. Hallelujah. Get over it, ladies and gentlemen. Go to a place where you can give God glory right now. Hallelujah. You can't go back and give God glory for what happened then, but you gotta give God glory for what he's doing right now. Go ahead and possess your joy back. Hallelujah. The devil has stole some of y'all's joy. Go get your joy back. Hallelujah. It's yours. Hallelujah. Claim it. Go ahead and let the devil know that even though you slay me, yeah, I'm gonna keep on trusting in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. How many glad in here that the Lord, hallelujah, is your shepherd tonight. I'm so glad that I'm standing. I'm a rock. Hallelujah. The rock of my salvation. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. He picked me up and turned me around. Placed my feet on the holy ground. And I'm so glad about it. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. It goes on to say here. 
Amen. Forgetting those things which are behind ha, and reaching forth unto the things which are before. Hallelujah. It says, I press toward the mark of the pride. Hallelujah. Of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm forgetting those things which are behind me. Ha, and I got a press on my heart. I got a determination tonight, y'all, that I'm going to make it. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road was going to be easy, but I don't believe leave. He brought me this far. Hallelujah. To leave me. I got a press. Hallelujah. Like when you lift weights and you lift weight and get all strong. You get all buffed up. I got a press tonight for the word of God. I got a press. Lord, give me more of your word. Give me more of your word. Feed me from man on high every day. Give me a fresh anointing and a fresh word every day. Every day that I work up, I wake up, give me something new that I can share with somebody else. That I can apply it to my life. That I can give your name the glory and get your name to pray for you got somewhere that you're taking me to and, and you're not going to take me to it hallelujah if I'm not ready to go to it but you're coming for a church without spot wrinkle or blemish. hallelujah I'm going to possess that land he already called me out of, uh, from the foundation of the world uh, he called me before he spoke light into existence uh, before he spoke the stars into heaven hallelujah before he spoke life hallelujah <laughs> into the cosmos. He called my name and I'm going to possess the promise that he had for me. Hallelujah. I'm going to give God glory. Hallelujah for the trials that I went through. Even though I had to go through some trials. He said in the midst of your trial. He said I'll be with you in trouble and I'll bring you all out of trouble. Hallelujah. I got to know you in the power of your resurrection. If I don't suffer with you then I can't reign with you. I know I got to suffer sometimes. And in my suffering, I'm not going to complain, but I'm going to give God the praise for what he's done for me. What about you tonight? Go ahead and possess it. It's yours. Hallelujah. Hold on to it. Don't let the devil have it. Hallelujah. Let me go home here. It's been led there for as many of us to be perfect. I'm reading in 15. Hallelujah. said, let us therefore as many as be perfect be this minded. And if in anything ye be other words minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. It says, for our conversation is in heaven. Hallelujah. So glad that my conversation is in heaven from which we also look for uh, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who shall change our vile body. Hallelujah. Uh, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according, hallelujah, to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. I'm glad about that tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My outer man is perishing, but my inner man, hallelujah, got some strength in here tonight. Hallelujah. I'm possessing that strength. Uh, that the Lord already promised me. He said, I won't hold no good thing from those that won't go right before me. Hallelujah. I'm possessing the joy. For the joy of the Lord is sure my strength tonight. What about you tonight? I want you to know it's yours tonight. Go ahead and claim it. Quit letting the devil rob you of the blessings that the Lord already promised you. And go ahead and hold on to it. Go ahead and claim it. Name it and claim it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Possess it. Or go ahead and tell the Lord, whatever I have to go through, just give me enough strength to go through it. Hallelujah. Give me enough grace to go through it. Hallelujah. Your grace is sufficient. If I have to go through some things, hallelujah, that I don't like. Hallelujah. Don't let me have no complaining spirit. Ah, the Bible said, count it all joy when you fall in the diverse temptation. Hallelujah. I'm going to try it. I'm going to take this work it out something. I'm so glad that he prepared a place for you and I. Go ahead and possess it. It's all yours. Heaven belongs to you. Not tomorrow. It belongs to you right now. Hallelujah. The apostle Paul. He said, I'll leave here the time of my departure. And he, hallelujah, I fought a good fight. But there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Under the Lord, a righteous God shall give to me. And not only to me, but everyone who loved his appearance. I said, I love it tonight. I said, I'm looking for it. I said, I love it tonight. I'm going with you, Jesus. When you come back, I got my lamp straight. I said, I'm turning bright. Hallelujah. I'm ready. I'm participating. God is coming. And any minute, I'm waiting.
can have it. If you need it, you can have it. Tell somebody, look at somebody, tell them it's yours. Go ahead, tell them it's yours. Tell them, go ahead and claim it. Shout, go ahead. God bless you tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How sweet it is.
So we we're having friends and family day. But this Sunday we're gonna have friend friend day, so come on out of here. <laughs> if it's gonna take that to get you out, we have a friend friend day. Man. So grab a friend and tell them to come on, let's go worship together. Hallelujah. So many of you turned out, it was so wonderful. Had such a good time in the Lord. Food was delicious, sister. I like just and we, and we feasted. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. We thank God this time. We can stand up. Thank you for being here tonight, you all. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Amen. Brother Bruce is back there. He painted our building. Yeah. And, uh, we thank God for that. Yeah. And, uh, he did an awesome job. Yeah. It was almost brand new. Yeah. Amen. So we thank God for you, Brother Bruce. Yeah. Amen. He got a shoot on tonight. And we, 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 y'all invite some sisters to the church. You know they're looking good. Let's look to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for what you've done, what you yet to do. Thank you because we know it is your word that have kept us, your word that will lead us all the way. We thank you for everyone who have came out tonight. Bless them 10, 20, 30, 100 fold in their strength, in their spirit, in their finances in their marriages, their relationship with their children, with their, their relationship with their job. We ask you to bless them in abundance, Lord, for the sacrifice that they have made tonight. Oh, God, we ask you, God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, bring us back at the appointed time to worship you. And if you shall come, hallelujah, find us ready, hallelujah, we pray, even so come for Jesus. Let us be ready for your soon coming. And we encourage tonight to walk with you every step of the way. So we'll say in Jesus' name, amen. You got